The stars of justice. We're the stars, yeah, who? <laughs> he does, you can pull that off. Uh, that. Yeah, right. You're out of yeah, honor. Yeah, me and Winchester have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But we, so our day-to-day -day lives are mostly fire and some PD. Uh -huh. um, in the past, we've been doing 50-50, and now it's just this year, we're just a little more pressure on fire. How did you guys start out? Your uh, writing team, is that correct? We are. We're, we're writing, writing team, team yeah. We'd always send features, uh -huh. and uh, we wrote 310 to Yuma and Wanted, and we wrote the second Fast and Furious, and then uh, some other stuff. And then Dick called, and we were offered the chance to write the pilot for Fire. Uh -huh. We'd never done TV before, we, and we expected that we were just going to write the pilot and then move on, and the experience was so good, and our working relationship with him was so good at NBC that five years later we're still here. <laughs> yeah. Was that an advantage, not ever having written TV before? I think it was. I mean, it, there were disadvantages for sure. We didn't know. We never managed a writing staff before. We had never hired actors and had to let actors go, which is no fun. And we never had a crew that you didn't have to just get along with for only four months. You know, when <laughs> yeah. you started thinking, we've got we've got people we've worked with now, most of them for five years, and unbelievable that it's kept going. But the advantages were um, not not having been set in our ways, not. Um, no, even knowing what the format was of a TV show before that, there's we talked to older writers who were like, there only used to be three commercial breaks. We're like, we don't mind having six commercial breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Gives us a chance to get out of the scene and on to the next one, you know. Um, so I think there's pros and cons for sure. But Dick was patient with us too, because he had to actually walk us through a lot of the nuance of television writing that we weren't used to, you know, like the the way you get out of an act and the, what you want, how you want to go, in, go into a commercial and things like that and, and how your B story rides under your A story and your C story and where that goes. I think early on our heads were spinning a little bit on some of that stuff. I remember at the upfronts, Michael and I wrote rode in a cab with one of the NBC executives and literally said, what's a rating point? Yeah, we had, <laughs> he had to explain that. No yeah. <laughs> more is good, right? Yeah, higher is better. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys based mostly in L.A. though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we do all the writing in L.A. and all the shootings here, and then we just go back and forth. Do you, do you come here just to sort of spend time and like, talk to the actors and, and sort of get an idea of their That and their also, like, yeah. actual production, you know, stuff. Like, we're here dealing with production issues, you know, so there's a lot of that. I always direct the fire finale every year, so there's a month that I'm here for that. And then, um, otherwise, it's it's... It's a pretty well-oiled machine at this point, you know, so when new actors come in, um, we might tend to spend a little more time with them, but, but honestly, uh, we've handled turnover really, really well here because our number one, twos, threes at the top of the show haven't changed, we haven't changed, and everybody is basically a really solid citizen, you know, so that makes our lives much easier than the we were dealing with other issues. Do you guys feel like crowd pop was a little bit? Fire was the first, and now there's a Oh, yeah. It's, what was the first part of the question? Do you feel, Do you feel like, like crowd, crowd pop was Oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, we, we're, we're still pinching ourselves. We can't believe it. I mean, we, we just shot our 100th episode of, and it seems like it was yesterday. And then, uh, and then we have... Uh, you know, three other spin outs that we, I mean, we just wouldn't have thought that that was even possible, especially in season one of Chicago Fire. We just never would have thought, oh, you can also spin out a police show, but that was all Dick Wolf. I mean, Dick thinks like way bigger than any producer I've ever met. And uh, so we've been very happy. And yeah, the other thing that's proud is like a lot of the shows we've written the first episode that, that spun out the other shows so we, those characters came from our heads you know and then and then here they are now walking on the carpet you know on other shows it's crazy did you guys like have a understanding of any of these worlds police fire or hospitals coming in or was it just a complete learning experience or chicago itself or that's a I don't know, learning experience we didn't know it, on fire for instance the first firehouse we walked in we didn't know a fire engine from a fire truck or that there was a difference you know? and so but you but but you quickly learn that it doesn't really matter what the format is and whether it's justice or fire or like we're working on something now with dick that's uh it's a music show right. and ultimately it's about the characters and dick said 
on the music show, I, I want the end of the pilot to feel like the end of the Chicago Fire pilot, which is there are five guys sitting there, and we know a little bit about all of them, but not everything, and we're interested in following them forward. So it doesn't matter whether that was music or firefighting in terms of like what makes good writing, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah but for us, it was also spending, we spent three weeks with the fire department here before we wrote the pilot. Yeah. And that when you do a 24 hour shift with the fire department, I think the, the biggest thing that clicked for us was the, you go out on a call, the bells ring, and you get this minimal description of information of what you're going to. I mean, it'll literally say, man down from unknown causes. And that could be a, a drunk guy in the street, or it could be a guy fell off of a billboard, or it could be somebody got hit by a train on the L tracks. And so you race up there, you, you have three minutes to get there, and then you get out and you you don't know what you're walking to. Yeah. And we thought, okay, that could be a sh like that's a show. The characters, all the bells go off, you have to put your differences aside and go to this crazy call. That wouldn't have happened had we not spent a lot of time with the firefighters. Uh, I was going to ask about, you guys are concentrating more on fires. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, talk to us a little bit about the rally yeah. and him leaving and, and also about when you when you get to the point where you're writing that they're all yeah. and how that works. And but so the, it's the worst part of the job, I think. For, you know, because you they are. This is a family. Like last night, for instance, Monica Raymond was went, sing, was singing jazz music in a place, and there were 30 people there from Chicago Fire. You know, the cast, and crew members, and everybody. So it's hard when somebody has to go. You know, we've done it a few times. And it's you got to keep the show fresh, and you you got to follow through on some of your threats. You know, to the to the audience right. as a writer. Like not everybody's going to get away scot free and be healthy and happy. You know, so. Um, Jimmy, the Jimmy situation was, it felt like a, a very emotionally volatile character and, and against a chief who we know generally makes good decisions but is very passionate and put them in a situation where they're both kind of right to feel the way they feel. And, but then you can't just let that dissipate and disappear. Like We kind of felt like we had to write that one all the way to the end. And the only way that that could end was one of them not being on the show anymore, and that wasn't going to be Chief Bogan. <laughs> right. So, and, and Stephen, to his credit, was a total pro about it, and surely will go on and have his own show in the near future. So, we're, I think we, Brant and I grew up watching, you know, like the A Team and these shows where literally every episode would end with our guys. Mm -hmm falling off a cliff or whatever it explodes the truck explodes and then you come back from commercial and everybody's okay right. and we thought the only way to keep this going we've done it in almost every season we've done it in every season is you the real threat of somebody's leaving the show you know either dies in a fire burn burned face we've had a methane gas in the face we've had somebody threaten they're gonna leave the firehouse and then they actually do and so then the audience doesn't know what to expect and we've done it in the second episode the 10th episode the eighth, 18th episode so you don't know when you're watching what's gonna happen I think that's one of the, one of the interesting things I find with the, the crossover thing is yeah it makes the shows much more real to me oh good like they're, 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 the same thing on the um, oh great suddenly it's like oh wow that like <laughs> I'm yeah, they would getting, cross in real yeah. life. Yeah, <laughs> articulating it well, but is that intentional or is that yes, kind absolutely. of a byproduct? Yeah, Dick, that, Dick calls it Dickens London, where they all you know they all live in this world and they they will show up in each other's stories because it is real, but it is like it also it's unusual. So I think because no shows have just had the 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 mechanism like we have to do it naturally. You know, Laverne and Shirley and Happy Days would naturally do it. Like, that was the only other show I remember where, you know, they all lived in Milwaukee and they just kind of <laughs> were in the same world every now and then. But, um, no, ours is, it's organic. And so now you see other shows that are starting to do crossovers more because yeah. our numbers go up on when we have big crossovers. But I, I, I don't enjoy those as much as I do having somebody from Justice pop yeah, into Molly's and have a beer. And you're like, oh, there's, there is Philip Winchester over yeah. there or there's, you know... Eamon Walker is sitting there with a, with a paper, you know, and it's cool just to, they're like, oh, they would be friends because she runs a hospital and he runs a firehouse and they're about the same age. And so, yeah, you could see what they would have a drink together. First, first season of Fire, we had two cops on that had pretty big arcs. And then we were also always showing up. We called it Northside Hospital at the time. They were always showing up at the hospital. And so it just became this natural 
That was not, there wasn't any plan to have three shows, but it was cops are in firefighters world, doctors are in firefighters world, and now in the first season of PD, they were always dealing with the district attorney, or a state's attorney, we call it here. And so uh, it just became, yeah, it's just organic. And so we love doing that. And then it became, well, if the paramedics are going to show up on PD, why aren't they our paramedics? You know what I mean? And so then it just became a matter of scheduling. Right? Yeah, which is tough on the actors. So it's tough, tough on everybody. So uh, I have a little follow-up to the question I asked previously, and that is I talked to Charlie Barnett yeah. in January, yeah. uh -huh. and I just said, you know, about his show being a one-season <laughs> show, would you ever come back to Chicago? And, and he said, well, Peter Mills isn't dead. That's right. true. He's right. not. So would we you would consider love it. having him pop in? Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, yeah, we love it. We, you know, as long as it, as long as it does, doesn't feel like a stunt, you know, you got to do it for the right reasons. So we just well, haven't found the right reason I yet. I We're not. Did Peter Mills move out of town? He, he moved did. to North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, but we had Lauren. We we figured out a way to get Shay back, where she showed up in a videotape of uh, that Severide had. And so I love it when we do that. Like Clark coming back on Med, oh, which is awesome. probably the biggest leap that we've made. He went from <laughs> firefighter to doctor, yeah. but we we put him in the hundredth episode of. Uh, fire because he and Severide had such a great relationship so uh, we love doing that stuff I would love to have uh, Charlie come back well, I talked to Jeff and he said when he's done with Med he, he's gonna he's hoping that Clark decides to become a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> perfect so perfect and then a cop so he can do all four that would be great <laughs>